Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Dr. Maria Tunduaga, I'm a physician, scientist, and CEO of SAMI, an AI-enabled monitoring platform for respiratory health anywhere. The company was born from personal tragedy after I lost my grandmother to a misdiagnosed COPD exacerbation. And ever since, I made it my life's mission to transform respiratory care with novel digital biomarkers. When she passed, one of the things that I realized was that uh, respiratory diseases not only affect millions of people, they are very expensive to treat. A COPD exacerbation event costs $28,000, which is driving an estimated of $800 billion in the next 20 years. And it doesn't stop there, because asthmatics are, are also very expensive. Long COVID patients are projected to become the priciest patients for healthcare systems, too. Not surprisingly, because of the pandemic, $3 billion have been spent in remote monitoring tools in the last three years. Just last year alone, in medical techno technology, the three highest unicorn valuations were remote monitoring platforms. The RPM market is expected to reach $175 billion globally. That's about the US oncology market today. And it's great that we are investing in remote monitoring tools, finally, to enable telemedicine, but respiratory is still plagued with weak data quality. A spirometry, for example, it's very hard to do, and patients just don't like doing it. Pulse oximetry, for example, it doesn't work when you're moving or when you have color skin, like me. And then questionnaires, the standard of care, they miss 50% of the exacerbations. So I get this question a lot. Maria, why is this happening? It turns out that the lungs are very hard to assess. They are, these are organs that are full of air, and the technology that we have today for home, outside of a hospital, they don't work. Ultrasound. This is a direct consequence of the fact that we are investing most of our, of our public and private funds into other ver verticals, like surgery, neurology, cardiovascular, that has not a single breakthrough in pulmonary medicine, or at least not a diagnostic in the last 50 years. So what's the innovation? So SAMI is based in very strong science. It has been already demonstrated that low frequency sound, not ultrasound, audible sound, can figure out volumes of air, especially in the lung. So we have this uh, wearable device, it's called Sylvie, it's a prototype still. We place it on the chest, we inject signals on one end, we transmit it through the chest, and then on the other end, we are listening. We transmit that data to an app, and later on to the cloud, where additional al algorithms are figuring out pulmonary function in real time. In the next two years, we're expecting to actually diagnose exacerbations and even predict them. And the innovation doesn't stop there. It doesn't stop there because we really want to streamline care coordination while fully engaging patients at risk of exacerbations. We just want to, we don't want to be another remote monitoring play. We truly want to close the loop from disease identification all the way to full escalation of exacerbation events. We need to do this because people are dying from exacerbations, just like my grandmother. It takes about five days to get the care that you need if you are exacerbating. Instead, with Sylvie, when you put on your chest for about three weeks, we can figure out your lung function, we can know when it's declining, we can start you on therapeutics early on. It could be non-invasive ventilation, it could be medicine, it could be even pulmonary rehab. We can prevent hospitalizations and obviously a lot of the cost. So far we have analyzed only 15% of the data per patient and we are almost about to reach FDA standards, several parameters on pulmonary endpoints against PFTs, plethysmography, CT scan, and even standardized questionnaires. What I'm more excited about is the fact that we can actually detect air trapping. Air trapping is an early biomarker of exacerbation detection. Air trapping also can show years before a spirometry can even detect or diagnose COPD. So our impact eventually could be great. Our initial target, ma target market is COPD. There are 30 million Americans affected by it. In a bottom-up approach, we can reach them through different verticals or ways. 
There is research, readmission, remote monitoring programs, and even patients, people, sorry, smokers, 18 million people who have not been diagnosed with COPD. We could actually diagnose them. Uh, ideally, we could actually get to a market of about 14.5 uh, 14 or 15 billion dollars in the US. Our business model, we are a service-based uh, model. We sell to multiple clients uh, for a strategic decentralized trials. We are pricing against our competitors. For pulmonary practices, again, we don't want to reinvent the wheel, remote monitoring models where we have on our back end the billing process, we keep 50% of the payment. And then for value-based care networks, we have already talked in conversations with a lot of them, we charge them a yearly service subscription for $3,000, that's about one third of the savings that we can generate for them. We have also done a lot of customer discovery and we decided to go this way in, or for go to market strategy. We will start with, with a research project for a research product next year, working with the strategics. We already secured a letter of intent. That's a 510K, sorry, that's a class one registered device, followed by value-based care models and pulmonary practices with a 510K. It's just easier to work with them. Their cell cycles are way shorter. And ideally later on with hospital networks and with payers. Of course, a lot of other companies have recognized the problem too. We still believe that we are the most relevant because we can actually tell you your lung function. This is not symptoms. We can do this without asking you to blow through anything. And more importantly, we can detect exacerbation biomarkers like no other. We are a team of 17 led by Ricardo Garcia. He's a hardware software and audio engineer. His code runs in 3 billion devices every day worldwide. I'm a former clinician. I publish in New England Journal of Medicine, Nature, PNAS, PNAS. I've been awarded in the past and I've raised money before. We have assembled a very strong commercial team. They have done it before. Anything from FDA clearances, reimbursement codes approved, merger, acquisitions, they have sold companies, they have secure patents. In less than eight months after our first VC check, we were able to prove our concept. We uh, secure a technology enhancement project with an strategic, and also uh, we were able to put together a team uh, of 15 diverse individuals. We have a clear pathway uh, for market entrance by 2025, again, starting with a class one product for research purposes with strategics by 2024, followed by a 510K. We have already identified three predicates, and ideally, we will uh, be cash flow positive with a predicted algorithm by 27, 28. The potential for this company with just four additional indications is about $15 billion, just in the US. We need to remember that about 10% of the world's population is going to be affected by a chronic respiratory condition the next decade, thanks to COVID, air pollution, and unfortunately, climate change. We have a track record of investor capital efficiency. We've raised so far 3.7 million. Half of that money is coming from grants. We have six issued patents. We have proved our concept. We have a letter of intent from an strategic for a potential recruitment revenue of a million dollars if we secure that contract. Uh, in 90 days, uh, we are preparing to raise a round of five million to hit two commercial, uh, sorry, two regulatory milestones and a commercial um, pilot with that strategic. If you're interested in joining, helping me, advising me, and of course, investing in Samai, please reach out. This is my contact information. You can look me on the app, Maria Artunduaga, very memorable name. Um, that's it, thank you very much. <laughs>